a strong performance, but we know that the pandemic has had an impact. It raised costs of your Liwana mine. Going forward, given uh, signs of a second and even a third wave, do you expect further impact? Well, I think in our operational side of our business, so Alawana is a new mine project that we're actually un is under construction. But in our operations, we had about a 22 cents per tonne C1 cost impact. Now, some of that was related to our roster changes that we implemented during the June quarter. That's now been wound back. But as we, we move into uh, the new financial year, we are very focused, obviously, on the health and safety of our team members and the communities in which we operate. So some of those measures associated with cleaning and hygiene uh, and some of our testing measures as well will remain in place. And we've allowed for that in our C1 cost guidance for this financial year, which is a range of $13 to $13.50. On the Alawana project, that uh, project's due to complete in December, so it's got another, only another sort of short five months to go. We're very focused again on health and safety, but we've put in place some acceleration measures to ensure we can deliver this important project the first hour on train in December. Uh, the focus has been on how iron ore prices have surged. Are they reflecting fundamentals, you think? Well, we've seen strong ongoing demand in the uh, in Chinese crude steel production. So we've seen a 1.4% increase in the first half of this calendar year to 499 million tonnes of crude steel. So we are seeing that very strong rebound in the Chinese economy, and that's underpinning strong demand for seaborne iron ore. At a time when there has been some dis uh, supply disruption from some other markets where there have been... Uh, I guess broader impacts of COVID-19 on some of their uh, on, on on their production. So we've you know we've seen very strong ongoing demand coupled with the strength of supply from Western Australia in particular. Uh, yet we're also seeing iron ore inventories in China building up, and there are questions about China's recovery, which has been described as uneven. Perhaps prices could be near their peak. Well, iron ore inventory levels in China at the moment are around 113 million tonnes of uh, inventory at Chinese ports. That's certainly a long way off from the peak, which was just over 165 million tonnes in April 2018. And actually, current levels are quite low. 113 million tonnes is about 30 days of, of consumption. And at the mills, the average holdings of iron ore are around 24 days, which is historically low. So the, uh, the level of inventory at port, some of that is seasonal as well, but we're still seeing that strong ongoing demand for seaborne iron ore. Well, Elizabeth, it's uh, Rish in Hong Kong. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, the other sides of your business. How have they been doing? We've considered on iron ore. What about aluminium and the like of that? Uh, Richard, we're just iron ore. We don't have any other operating uh, assets at the moment. Um, so uh, you might be confusing us with, with uh, another company that reported yesterday. But, no, we're, we're <laughs> iron ore in the Pilbara at the moment. We do have some diversification opportunities we're currently assessing, but they're uh, early-stage exploration at the moment. My apologies, I was misled. OK, uh, so tell me, do you have a view on price here and how high prices could go for iron ore? Well, I never like to predict the iron ore price. Uh, I think what's what's important is the strength of that ongoing demand. We're seeing, um, you know, further investment in infrastructure in China. We're seeing a very strong V-shaped recovery in that economy, and that really is driving that strong demand for iron ore. And we have seen some supply disruptions. Earlier this calendar year, there were some weather-related disruptions. And more recently, from Brazil, there have been some COVID impacts on some of the other uh, or the other major producers. So there's, you know, that's that's really underpinning, I think, that strength in the iron ore price. But, you know, we are the, we have the industry leading cost position. We are the lowest cost producer of iron ore globally. We just announced our, our full year 20 C1 cost of $12.94 per metric tonne. So that's below $13. And that included some costs associated with COVID. So, um, you know, we focus on controlling the things we can control. And by being the lowest cost producer, and the, the, the market will in inevitably go through cycles, but by being low cost, we still generate those very strong cash margins. Uh, so, Elizabeth, t tell me about your break even cost then. Oh, well, our break-even costs, um, you know, depending on shipping rates, which can be the most volatile. So, you know, it's a bit hard to... Uh, you know, shipping rates have actually been quite volatile in recent times. But with a, with a C1 cost and you add royalties, um, 
interest and and shipping and uh, and other and interest to that as well it's going to be somewhere in the mid 20s to 30 dollars but again that that does depend on those shipping rates Elizabeth, in the long term, China has plans to perhaps secure its own iron ore supply. Will that put into question the sustainability of Fortescue going forward? Uh, look, we are continuing to reinvest in our business. We have very strong relationships with our customers. We're seeing ongoing you know, growth in steel production. Even at 1% or 2% a year of uh, growth in steel production, that would require in the range of 30 to 50 million tonnes of additional iron ore supply. So the strength in that ongoing demand, coupled with our own investment, and by 2022, we will have a high-grade magnetite concentrate product uh, that we will be supplying to our customers. We're in close proximity to China, and we know that we will remain a very strong um, supplier of iron ore to that market. Uh, before we let you go, Elizabeth, we know that... Uh Fortescue has benefited from the disruption in the supply from Vali, and Vali has said that it will ramp up production in the next six months. How do you see this playing out? Um, look, I, th I think that, um, you know, before the, uh, the market was disrupted in January 2019 with the tragic tailings dam collapse in, in Brazil, uh, you know, Vale have guided to around 310 million tonnes of um, production for this calendar year. But prior to that event, it was getting closer to sort of guidance of 400 million tonnes. So there is still, there's, there's been a deficit ever since that uh, that uh, event occurred. Um, and we've, we've remained a very strong supplier. So obviously we stay abreast of what's happening in the market. But we're certainly um, continuing with our plans, with our Alawana project and with our Ironbridge Magnetite project. Elizabeth, what do you think is your biggest fear going forward uh, for, for the business? What are you worried about? Well, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, you know, we have managed it incredibly well in Australia. And certainly in Western Australia, we've been in a fortunate position where the government has uh, recognised that we provide an essential service and we've been allowed to continue to operate. But we can't ignore the fact that we are in the midst of a global pandemic. And uh, I think that right now is the uh, and uh, health and safety is our biggest priority. And for us, that's, our, I guess, in terms of my biggest fear, it's, it's, it's really how the, uh, the pandemic continues to unfold both globally and within Australia.